morning, church. Welcome to Benevola United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Suzanne Jones. It's a pleasure to welcome you here, and great is his faithfulness. Amen? He has brought us through another week. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, speaking of things during the week, um, inside of your bulletin, there is a whole list of activities that we're preparing for for our Easter celebrations, as well as activities that you can uh, witness to your faith and exercise your faith and, and participate in. Um, and you'll see the calendar there and a whole listing of different options. Uh, one thing in particular I wanted to lift up is that we are collecting names for college kids and those in military. Uh, we're going to be making some uh, care packages for them in April, and we need to collect those names so we can send those packages out. So if you have a college student that you would like to send a package to, a care package to, or just give a little love to a military personnel, let Terry Baker in our office know. Uh, just contact the office, and we'll be happy to put the name on there and send them a package uh, on your behalf. Uh, any other announcements that we need to bring forward this morning? Of course, do not forget, next week is Palm Sunday. We'll be waving palms in celebration here uh, in service, but we also have Holy Week beginning next week, too. I can't believe it's here. <laughs> we'll have our Monday Thursday service, which we will be hosting. We'll have a soup and su sandwich supper at 6 o'clock on Thursday, the 28th. It's at the Spiritual Life Center, and then we'll worship up here as a community with different churches around the area. And we'll have the choirs here singing. It'll be a beautiful service. We'll experience communion as well as uh, hand-washing service. We'll also have an opportunity to participate with other community members at a Good Friday service. Uh, there are one being offered in Keatesville, Maryland, at the Lutheran Church in town there. And that information is in your bulletin. Um, as well as uh, there's opportunity at Brownsville Church of the Brethren down on 67 to worship, too. If, you, if there's more information about that, you can see the email that we send out uh, letting you know of all the opportunities to worship. And then Good Friday, we're actually going to have here in our sanctuary, it's going to be open all day for you to come and uh, be in the attitude of prayer. We're going to have stations of the cross set up here in the sanctuary and around this uh, area. And we're also going to have a prayer labyrinth, which will be located here in our overflow room. Just a chance for you to come and walk and pray, and there'll be some activity there and prompts to help you with prayer too. So I know myself, I'm looking forward to participating in that, and, uh, and we're really looking forward to people coming and experiencing that on Good Friday. Uh, so something to look forward to. And of course, on Easter, we got our sunrise service at 630. I'm sure you'll all be awake for that, right? Because there'll be coffee and donuts afterward for fellowship and then our nine o'clock service certainly will have our easter celebration with our choir leading a cantata which will be fantastic and i hope you can uh, j join us for that anything else i think i covered it all yes miss cindy what happened at umbc porter You got second place in your DI tournament. That is a celebration. Absolutely. Congratulations. You get, you, you get to go to Kansas City now? Oh, my goodness. Well, you're going to take me with you, right? Because you need your pastor to pray for you out there, right? Awesome job with the team for Destination Imagination. That's what it stands for, right, DI? That's fantastic. What a celebration. If anyone wants to donate money to help support a good cause, Porter and Eileen's right over there. <laughs> and, and Haley is a part of that, too. Or Bailey is a part of that, too. Your grandchild Bailey is part of that. What a joy. What a joy. Oh, my goodness gracious. We got to come up with some new innovative ministry stuff and put that one on the, on the committee for that, right? Congratulations to your team and to the team at Boonesboro. Uh, we're proud of all of you. All right, friends. Well, today we are going to worship our good and gracious God. If we can stand as we are able and join together in our call to worship, and we will worship together. The words will be on the screen for your convenience. This is the fifth Sunday 
in our Lenten journey, the step of serving and sacrifice. Be with us, Lord, as we take this step. This requires the willingness to give all of your life to the Lord. Be with us, Lord, as we commit our lives to you. Come, let us worship and offer our voices of praise to God. Let us open our hearts and spirits to God this day. Let us sing our song on page 2152, Change My Heart, O God. Let us lift one another up in prayer and celebrate our joys and concerns that we have and, and lift them up together as one. Yes, Kathy. Oh. We will continue to pray for your sister Nancy as she received her second chemo treatment and it is her hazard down right now. We pray for Nancy. Ruth. Oh, goodness, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Well, your great nephew, Brett, he's in a show. And is this, this is the last weekend. His, his, today is his last performance for this uh, particular round of show. Uh, we pray for that cast and crew and him, as well as uh, for Carol for continued healing and uh, as she goes along with her medical uh, doctors, uh, but also for Ashley, who will be receiving major oral oral. Uh, surgery in the upcoming week or so. Uh, we want to keep her in prayer. Yes, Kathy. Yes, that thing. Katie's cupboard, our food pantry, served 26 families this week. Uh, praise God we had the opportunity to be able to serve in such a way. Yes, Tom. For all the families who could not be with us today, we pray for those. Yes, Rick. Yes, absolutely. Prayers for your brother, uh, Don, who's in the hospital, and, and your sister as well. Uh, that's going through and, and nursing along the side that. Jason.
we will keep Brian in prayer uh, as he has uh, going through and healing from infection. Uh, and your cousin Janie, uh, your, your step aunt, your step aunt Janie, uh, who had a heart attack and is in the ICU currently. Melissa. Absolutely. I'm so sorry to learn of her passing, and our prayers are with Christy's family and with, with you as well, and all those who uh, are in her life. We lift her up. Yes, Ruth. Indeed. Although he's going to be, he's going to be like, really? <laughs> That's all right. Well, we uh, will keep Bonnie in prayer uh, as, as she is recovering from a fall that she had. Uh, so prayers for Bonnie Schiffler. Yes, Bill. Prayers for Katie as she's having complications with her pregnancy. She's in her seventh month. I want to keep that in prayer. Also want to keep uh, Faye Sly in prayer. Uh, she had a bout at the hospital, and, and but she is should be home now. Uh, she was supposed to be released on uh, uh, yesterday, uh, but she uh, is with Jack, and, and she's doing all right. But we want to keep them in prayer. And if you'd like to send them a card, Jack and Faye, a card, I'm sure she would have loved to see that and uh, really feel love. Uh, by her congregation if she received some of that. Yes, Bill. Maggie yeah, Maggie. Yeah. Maggie had her baby on Friday. Congratulations. Oh, wow. I'm going to say, you better mention that. <laughs> Clayton Dean. Clayton Eden. Ooh, I love it. I love it. Congratulations, mom and baby doing well, dad as well, grandparents are doing all right. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God for new life. Uh, whenever we have all these concerns and worries, it's always wonderful to hear the good and the new that's coming about in our lives, too. Certainly want to lift that up. Ron. Tammy's birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday, Tammy, if you're watching online. Uh, sometimes they tune in later on, but we're, we're going to celebrate her anyway. Drop her a Facebook message if you're friends on Facebook. Just bomb the heck out of her message with her birthday blood. Blow it up. And, and yes, Larry. God. Swing for that home run. It does. That's a, that's a sermon right there for it. Praise God. She re received uh, honors, but also is accepted to the UM of University of Maryland honors program. A full ride. Honors College. Honors College, which is a, a separate college altogether uh, from the system, which is fantastic. Congratulations and God's blessing on that too. Yes, one more, Ruth. You've got your you've got your maximum today. Jim is present with us today, too. It is a joy to welcome you back, Jim, and to have you here this morning. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're glad you're here and doing well, uh, in fact. Well, friends, let us take this moment now, and, and with all that we have lifted up and all that we have yet to lift up, too, let us talk to God. Will you bow your heads with me? Loving God, we give you thanks.
for this day today, a day in which we can gather together and we can worship you. We, we gather and worship and we can be in one spirit together, no matter the miles, no matter where we are, whether we're watching online or whether we're here in this space. We know you are present. And we give you thanks for the way that you have shown up for us this week in celebrations and healings in accomplishments and good news, the joys that you have given us. We thank you for the laughs, for the, the feeling of being seen and being known and loved by those who are around us. We thank you for the people that you've sent in our lives to remind us of your presence. And we also thank you for the direct ways that you have loved us and you've reminded us that you are in control. God, we also bring with us into this space an acknowledgement that you are God and we are not. We carry with us things that weigh us down, concerns and worries, things that are, are going on in our world, sometimes an overwhelming news headline or perhaps something we may hear among our community. Lord, we lift up our community in which we live in to you. We lift up all these names in which we have lifted aloud in their situations, things that are worrying us, that are concerning for us. And we lift those concerns that are also in our inner selves that we have yet to mention aloud. We bring it all to you, knowing that you desire to make our burden light. Help us. Help us to hand that stuff to you. To trust you with our deepest concerns. And yet, God, we sometimes come into this space with things that we choose to hide from you, things we choose to hide from each other and even hide from ourselves. And you invite us to be fully honest so that you can set us free. So in the next few moments, we will offer you our silent confession. Hear our hearts, dear Lord. You hear us, and your love and your grace overwhelms us. Your forgiveness sets us free. Help us to accept it. Help us to live freely as your people and fill us with your spirit so that we can be your hands and your feet and your heartbeat in this world and the world around us to make it look like you intended. May we hear a word from you today. And as your people, we now lift and join our voices together and pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, this morning we'll pass the peace with one another by turning as you are comfortable to someone and saying, the peace of the Christ be with you, receiving that peace from someone else. And we'll invite the children to come forward as a special guest comes to speak with us this morning.
his girlfriend. How are you? How are you? Here he is. Good morning, Nick. How are you? It's so good to see you. <laughs> oh, don't do that. That's crazy. That's crazy. I think we got everybody. Rory's here too. Excellent. Well, the Lord be with you. Well, good morning, friends. How are you? I have a special guest up here with me this morning. Can you say hi, Miss Meredith? Miss Meredith is the camp director at Camp Manadokan down towards like the Harper's Ferry. I guess it's a Knoxville address. And it's a church camp that the Baltimore Washington Conference uh, owns and sponsors a lot uh, towards our apportionments, uh, which we give in our offering each week. Lots of that goes to support camp ministries. And this camp is closest to us. And she's here to talk to us all about camp and some experience to her. So here you go, Miss Merritt. There you go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm so happy to be with y'all this morning. I thought it might be interesting or helpful for you all for me to talk about what just like a typical day at summer camp might be. And feel free to ask any questions. Anyone is welcome to ask any questions. And then after we talk about what just a typical day at camp might look like, I thought I would give y'all some extra information about camp and our ministry and all that good stuff. So when you go to summer camp, you get you most of the time sleep there. We do have a day camp option this summer. And so if sleeping at camp is just like a no-go for you, trust that we have day camp. That you would move into your lodge or your cabin and you would bring your sleeping bag and kind of decorate your bunk. And then you would sleep there and then you'd wake up in the morning with other kids your age and your counselors would probably be knocking on your door. If I was your counselor, I might say something like, good morning, it's time to wake up uh, as I went down the hallway. And then we would get dressed and brush our teeth and get ready for the day. Manajokin is kind of known for having really good food. So we would head to breakfast and eat in the dining hall with all of the other campers. And then after breakfast, we have a Bible study time. Do you have a question? Yeah, what kind of camp have you been to? Ooh, that sounds fun. Well, Manadokan. Yeah, so camp is in the woods, but Manadokan has very nice facilities. I grew up working at a different United Methodist summer camp in Virginia that was a little bit more rustic than Manadokan. But all of our facilities have air conditioning. And bathrooms are pretty close by. Yeah. What's your question? Oh, yeah. We got some fun activities. So, so you've, you've given away so many of the good things I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to talk about them again because I've got the microphone and I want to make sure that everyone can hear me. But I love all of the things that you just said. 
So after breakfast, we have our Bible study time, which is a time where we might sing some songs, we would read the Bible, talk through. Every summer we have a theme. This summer our theme is driven by love. So we're going to talk about all the ways that God's love drives us to do good things in the world. And then after Bible study, we would have a morning activity block. So at the beginning of the week, that would probably be low ropes, which is really team building focused. As you go throughout the week, you might do the zip line or the aerial park. We have an archery range, all sorts of good things. Every camper that comes to Manadokan also typically goes on a river trip, whether that's rafting, canoeing, kayaking. We are right on the Potomac River. Uh, right near Harper's Ferry, and so we want to make good use of that beautiful resource, um, and so we love taking kids out on the river. Then you would head to lunch. In the afternoon, we have more activity blocks, so that might look like tie-dyeing a t-shirt, going to the pool, doing more high adventure activities, all fun things like you were talking about. And then we have snack time in the afternoon, which is always a good time. And then we head on to dinner at like 5.30. Again, really, really wonderful food at Manadokan. We're famous for our yeast rolls. Show of hands, who has ever eaten in the Manadokan dining hall? Anyone? Anyone been to camp and had a meal? Yeah? Did y'all have some rolls? Did you eat rolls? Rolls are like a big, big Manadokan thing I'm learning. Um, and then after dinner, we have all camp activity time, so we might... Um, be playing like a big game or doing a big activity together. And then we head towards worship to kind of bookend our day and close out with worship, where again, we would sing fun songs. We would have a United Methodist clergy person speaking about the theme. Uh, and then we go back to our lodging location and have a little wind down and bedtime routine. So camp is a really great opportunity to make new friends. I always say that camp is all about building relationships with each other, with nature, and with God. Uh, those are the three sort of connection points that we really want to focus on. And y'all are super fortunate that Manadokan is really close. It only took me 25 minutes to get here this morning. Uh, so I live at camp as the director, and bless you, get the honor of doing all sorts of camp things. Uh, a lot of people sometimes think that camp is just in the summer or is just for kids, uh, and that is not true. We are open year-round, full-time, as a retreat facility. We, this past weekend, hosted a women's retreat for New Hope UMC in Brunswick, um, and that's just like one example of a, a weekend retreat that we might be hosting. There are lots and lots of ways for adults to be involved at camp, whether that's volunteering with our summer program, working in the kitchen, volunteering with maintenance. I don't know if John is here this morning, but John Holdway volunteers every week at Manadokan and is a super, super amazing person that gives so, so much uh, to our ministry. And so if anyone has any questions about Manadokan or ways that they could be involved, uh, I'll be hanging out after the service, and I also have some postcards and posters about summer camp. Uh, so lots of good information, but I'm very curious about what questions you have. Question. Do you have, like, a choice of who to go with or, like, a group that you want? Yeah, so questions about sleeping. So most of our camps are Sunday through Friday, week-long residential camps where you do spend the night, but we do have a day camp option this year where you would get dropped off in the morning and then picked up in the evening. And so you could be with your camp friends during the day, but then go home and be with your family at night. We also have mini camp, which is three days and two nights. So if the week is just like too much, you can do a little sampler of camp with just two nights away. Yeah. What? Why do we what? Why do we sleep at camp? So I really think that when you kind of take time away from your normal routine, you can see God and you can see life in a new and different perspective. And so one really big change is where you sleep, where you eat, where you live. And so kind of taking that time away can help deepen your faith and just change how you see life. Any other questions? Questions from the audience? Always willing to... 
Yeah, so we take kids going into first grade. So we want you to have finished kindergarten, a solid like year in public school. Yeah, yeah, so you're in kindergarten right now. So you could come to camp this summer. And then we take kids all the way through 12th grade. Any other questions? And again, sh Meredith will be out in our hallway if you have questions or want to pick up a postcard or even a poster. She has information out there for us. Uh, but thank you so much. So can we say a quick prayer with Meredith uh, and, and pray for the camp and the campers who will be coming? Let's bow our heads. Dear God, we thank you for the camping ministries and for Camp Manadokan. And we thank you for Meredith and her leadership and her directorship and all of the volunteers and then staff that work there. Lord, we ask that this season be a season of blessing as new campers are deciding to come to camp or those who are returning to camp to experience your goodness and love in a new way. We thank you for nature and all the ways you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me up here. You can go to church, and uh, thank you, Meredith, for your information. I'll invite our lay speaker to come and share the word this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's listen to God's word uh, from the gospel written by the disciple that Jesus loved and who took care of Jesus' mother um, after the crucifixion. Twelfth chapter of John. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies... It produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the ones who serve me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said, it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The word of God for the people of God. Be God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of the word that you have given us this day. Help us to take this word and write it upon our hearts. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, based on this image 
that our sermon series is on right now, um, talking about the seeds of, of planting that Jesus was talking about in our scripture this morning on John that uh, Klaus read for us. I got to thinking about seeds and serving. So how many of you are planting seeds right now in your gardens or preparing seedlings to go in the gardens? There's a lot of busy work that's happening, right, Miss Amy and John and everyone? Lots of seedlings that are getting ready to go. Um, my sister is the gardener in our family. I have ruled it not my talent, but her talent. And she sent me a picture this week of her seedlings. She's got them all in different little containers, paper cups, strawberry containers, egg cartons. She's got tons of stuff that she's going to be planting this year. Uh, and last year, she did the same routine. And she found it was very helpful when she cared for her seeds before she planted them in the hard soil that she has. She's up there in Wayne, Waynesboro, so the, the, seed, the ground is similar to this area, but it's not very happy with seeds when it receives it. However, last year, she was blessed with seeds that she did not plant. A bird just happened to fly over and leave some seeds uh, in the form of feces. <laughs> but she had tomatoes pop up, cherry tomatoes, that she didn't plant. And she had a lot of them. And she nurtured them and cared for them and made some delicious salsa and spaghetti sauce that she was able to use in the rest of the summer here and, and the winter months. I wonder this year if she's going to plant any grape tomato seeds that she gathered from those blessings of tomatoes. I don't know. But when a seed is buried in the ground, whether it's put there by a human or by an animal, just happened to do in its business on a plant, it goes through a process like a death. And it's transformed. It kind of dies to itself and then transforms into something else. Have you ever seen those slow motion movies of a plant growing underground? It takes some, uh, some transformation. And many people wait until spring to plant their seeds, but there are some seeds that must be planted in the winter months because they need that harsh cold to kind of kill them so that they can come alive. It sounds kind of counteractive, but things like cabbage, kale, mint, and oregano, they need to be planted deeply into the ground in cold ground. And when it's very cold, they experience that chill, and that helps them grow into their full potential. Where other seeds that are like planted in the spring those seeds need a rich, warm soil, something that will help the nurture them as they get taller and taller and produce. Spring usually has those longer days and than nights, and it gives the seeds more sunlight and more warmth. Therefore, the ground is a little bit warmer for them. The way a seed is planted and taken care of, it also helps its production how much it will produce. If you nurture and care something, it usually will be fruitful, no matter what it is. Amen? When we nurture and care for our children, they will be fruitful, and they will grow into adults. Just like when Jesus is comparing life to a seed, he says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it only remains a seed. But if it dies... It can produce many seeds, and he goes on to compare it to wheat. Jesus teaches us that people, like seeds, they need help and proper care in order to flourish. And that includes spending life together and, and with one another and not being alone. And as a follower of Jesus, we must be willing to be around other people. And sometimes that means being around people we don't like. Amen? Go ahead, you can say it. Amen. Jesus said, 
anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it, uh, keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. In other words, we must be willing to serve sacrificially. Farmers and gardeners sacrifice their time to nurture seeds when they are planted. And most of us are called to the daily sacrifices of ourselves. And in doing so, we serve him. I got to thinking as Meredith was talking about Camp Manadokan, and we all, most of us here know John Holdway and the ministry he does. He goes out, chops down trees and makes them grow, and he cares for, for all the woodlands and nature. And he sacrifices his time to go down to Camp Manadokan to make sure that it is safe for children and adults to gather and have ministry there. He sacrifices himself in chopping down old trees that are hollow, that could be a potential threat. But then that wood is transformed sometimes to building things, to be used in ministry or even making specific things for the children, or in other uses, like warming others for the winter nights. But it's a form of sacrifice. We also have sacrifices, too. Uh, Many of you here are married or in a close relationship. You do some sacrificing in that, don't you? You better say, yeah. (laughs) We do. You know, relationships, whether you are married or in a close relationship, no matter what they are, they are complicated. And it takes work. It takes wisdom. It takes understanding. But when you're, I'll say for my example, when you're marriage, because I, I am married, if a marriage is stuck or when your close relationship needs to grow, The first thing we want to say is, oh, we have to work on our communication skills. I'll tell you, that's not the first thing you need to work on. The most most important thing to work on is that each person, each person in that relationship has to make a choice. A choice to die to themselves in order to serve the other. To sacrifice something. I have to sacrifice my being right so I can hear my husband when he has an opinion or for that one day that he is right (laughs) and I have to eat a slice of humble pie, right? Because he is. He has his moments, and I do too because we are not perfect people. None of us are. None of us are. There is no outweighing each other in a relationship. Only then, when we can sacrifice ourselves, we can have a fruitful relationship. Things can grow. Another example, I mentioned parenting. Parenting sometimes feels like a death because you feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over and you're not getting anywhere. You know, maybe you're making sandwiches for the millionth time or you've disciplined your child for the millionth time and they're still not listening. The room is still not cleaned up. Or perhaps you've changed that diaper what feels like the millionth time. And you are actually, as the parent, you are choosing to sacrifice yourself in order to bring care and abundance to that tiny or large human being, whatever age they are. You're planting seeds. Parenting is like planting a seed. And you don't know how it's going to grow. It's just like farming and gardening. Sometimes you don't see the fruit right away, and you might get really irritated. But it takes a while, and it takes sacrifice to care for another. And we can see this in our individual lives too. If you want to see growth in your spiritual life, what do you have to do? 
You have to sacrifice your time and spend it with God. You have to realize that your time is not your time. You're not in charge of the sun or the moon. God is. So we have to sacrifice ourselves. That means sometimes it might look like getting up in the morning a little extra early to spend in the scriptures or maybe spending a Sunday morning with like-minded Christians or those who may need to hear the word from you. Might be going out in nature to experience a walk and taking time from your busy schedule to do so. It means saying no to one activity so that you can be present with God. And that can be really hard to do. And speaking of churches, that is where many seeds are planted. Amen? How many seeds have been planted here? How many children have experienced God here and have blossomed into ministry or continue to bring people to faith this day? You yourself, how, how many times have you been planted here? And how many seeds do I throw out every Sunday for you to listen to? Something catches sometime. I don't know what plants, but something's there. And we have things and people here that help till it and help nurture it and cultivate those seeds. I think of the sacrifice that happens for church. A church cannot grow in a positive way without the decision to die for ourselves. That means in the form of our giving, in the form of our time, in the form of our efforts. If you want to see the church grow, it often begins with investing your time in fellow members of the church who benefit from your friendship and from your relationship, from your story, your testimony that you share. That is where you can see a fruitful harvest, the bonds that have been created and formed. We are called to take up our cross and die a daily death. Yeah, it's a metaphor. But we are called to die to ourselves again and again and again. It is to emulate the behavior Jesus had. Jesus did not have to go to that cross, but yet he did. He sacrificed for us. And in the great mundane ways that we may see our self-sacrifices, we should not doubt because those are small seeds being planted. And they will produce a bounty for the kingdom of God. If we are consistent, if we are disciplined in it, and we just remember to sacrifice ourselves, to take the time to sit in a Bible study or perhaps go to a fellowship event, maybe serve once in a while at the soup kitchen or even Katie's cupboard. Maybe it's just sending a card or making a phone call and sacrificing five or ten minutes to call someone who might be uh, haven't seen in a while. In our marriages, in our children, in our spiritual lives, our friendships, our church, our lives in the world, we can produce a bounty. Whoever serves can produce a bounty. And that's not an easy path. We will fail again and again because we're human. It's what we do. But thankfully, we have a Savior and a God who offers us grace, who offers us continuous forgiveness, and he can sympathize with our weakness too. We have a Savior who forgives our sins, a Savior who leads us on. Will we trust in that grace? Will we trust and serve faithfully. I pray this week that you will find ways to serve sacrificially and serve and, and just wait for that bounty to produce because it's coming, friends. The bounty is coming. Thanks be to God. Amen. And speaking of fruit, 
our fruit produces so much beyond these walls. As I mentioned, when we uh, take up our offering, part of our offering goes to support ministries that are beyond these walls. They stay local, but they also support ministries like Camp Manadokan to help send campers to uh, experience God in nature, but also help support other camps in our district and our area in activities too, where people can become fruitful for God. So today, let us give back to God what God has so gratefully given to us so that it can be produced and we can move forward in the kingdom of God. Our choir members will come forward and offer their giving as well. But I'll first get the ushers to come first and collect today's offering.
we dedicate ourselves and our offerings to you. Help us to use our spiritual gifts and monetary blessings as a testimony to your glory. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. We will sing our last hymn this morning. We'll sing the first verse, Miss Ruan. Thank you. The first verse of 383 or 338. <laughs> Thank you. 